In the diagram of quadrilateral ABCD with diagonal AC shown below, segments GH and EF are drawn. AE is congruent to CG, BE is congruent to DG, AH is congruent to CF, and AD is congruent to CB. Prove segment EF is congruent to GH. Okay, so let's mark up the diagram. AE is congruent to CG. Uh, BE is congruent to DG. AH is congruent to CF. AH is congruent to CF. And AD is congruent to CB. AD is congruent to CB. Okay, so I have a lot of segments that are congruent. Uh, it didn't specify that quadrilateral ABCD is a parallelogram, but um, I believe we have sufficient information here to show that ABCD is a parallelogram because if you look at this, AD and BC are already opposite. I mean, the one pair of sides are opposite already, and they are congruent. Um, we can also show that AE plus EB will equal to DG plus GC using segment addition postulates. So uh, AB and DC, therefore, is going to be congruent as well. So ABCD, it will be a parallelogram as a result of this. Having established that ABCD is a parallelogram, this will then give us inf uh, enough information to then declare, oh, that the uh, alternate interior angles over here, I want to use a different color for that, that these angles over here that I'm marking in red, those are going to be congruent because of alternate interior angles. However, that's not going to be enough. We need at least another angle or another side to show that the, um, that the two triangles are congruent. So it looks like a, uh, HF, we can um, say that it's uh, equal to itself, and then we can use yet another segment addition postulate to add um, HF with AH and show that AF is congruent to HC. So that's the game plan. I've said a lot more and it sounds very convoluted, but um, let's let's go through the, the process of actually proving it, okay? Um, so I want to leave all those markings in blue because those are all a part of the givens. I want to declare, or not declare, I want to um, uh, set up a segment addition postulate to show that AE plus EB, AE plus EB is equal to AB. And I want to say that DG plus uh, GC is equal to DC. So this is true because of segment addition postulate. And these ditto marks because they are the same reasons. And then after I have that established, I, I know that um, AE and GC are congruent, or A and CG. Actually, I'm going to write in the same notation as they have it up there. So I want to write CG instead of GC. And I am going to write uh, AE and EB, I want to write BE instead of EB. Why? Because it will make things, it will make matching things in a moment a, a little easier to recognize. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take lines one and two and I'm going to add them together. So I'm going to take lines one and two and I'm going to add them one together and what I'll end up with is AE plus BE will equal to CG or DG plus CG. And again, the reason for this is addition. Lines one plus lines two. 
If I take line 1 and line 2 and treat them as if they were equations, I will end up with uh, line number 7. And then, because line 5 and line 6, AE plus BE is equal to AB, I want to replace the left side of uh, statement number 7 with AB. And because of line number 6, DG plus CG is DC, I want to replace the right side of statement number 7 with DC. And the reason for this is substitution. between lines uh, 5, 6 into line 7. Line 5, line 6 into line 7. Okay, so now I have AB is equal to DC or congruent to DC. I use them interchangeably just because, I mean, even though there is a slight, um, slight difference, uh, it's not big of deal in the regions to really differentiate or distinguish between the two. So AB equal to DC, or you can think of AB congruent to DC, however which way you want to put it. But the, uh, the point is, the um, opposite sides are now congruent. So I can say tri um, quadrilateral ABCD is a parallelogram. And the reason for this is opposite sides are congruent. And this is established in lines, let's see here, uh, line 4 and line 8. Okay, so I have... ABCD is a parallelogram now. That's great. The next thing I can do is I can say this angle over here, which I'm highlighting in red, they are going to be congruent. So EAF is congruent to uh, GCH. And the reason for that is because alternate, actually, I s skipped a step here. I, I was supposed to s uh, establish that opposite sides are parallel first. My apologies. So I should say AB and DC are parallel because opposite sides of a parallelogram are parallel. So, and then in line 11, I can then say what I set out to say a moment ago, which was e, angle E, A, F is congruent to angle, I forget the letterings now, E, A, F, G, C, H. G, C, H. And this is because of alternate interior angles are congruent. Okay, so now that I have that, line 12, uh, I need so I have GC is congruent to AE. That was given to us. I'm going to pr try and prove the following. I want to use um, a highlighter here. I want to try and prove that HC is congruent to AF. So how am I going to do that? Well, I know that HF is congruent to itself. So HF is congruent to itself. Whoops. I should use this. So HF is congruent to itself. And this is because of reflexive. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, a H congruent to C F, which is in line three, and add it with line twelve. So A H plus H F is going to equal to H F plus F C or C F. And this is because of addition from lines uh, 3 and 12. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say that AH plus HF is equal to AF. And I'm going to say the same thing, HF plus CF is equal to HC. And this is because of segment addition postulate. Lines 14 and 15 have the same exact reason, so I'm going to put ditto marks. And then I am going to combine 14, 15, and 13 together. I'm going to perform a substitution. Since AH plus HF is equal to AF, I want to replace the left side of the uh, equal symbol in line 13 with AF. And I'm going to replace the right side of line 13 with HC because I know that HF plus CF is equal to HC. And this is because of substitution. So this is substituting, I am substituting lines 14, 15 into 13. And we're pretty close to finishing now because we have AF is equal to HC or congruent to HC. So now I can say um, that triangle GCH is going to be congruent to triangle uh, EAF because of side angle side. Where is it side angle side again? Well, that's because I have GC uh, which was, let me see here, G or CG congruent to AE. That's line one. That's the side right here, right? And then the angle was proven over here. And the side was proven in the last step right here. So it's lines one, 11, and 16. And then finally, finally, uh, we have what we were set out to prove, which was EF congruent to GH. So EF is congruent to GH because of CPCTC, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So there it is again in its entirety.